Look, he's got a big old leech. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am out with the dynamic duo of Stinkles and Stankles and uh, we're doing some winter hot tent camping. Um, I am in the same forest I was last time I did a two-nighter. It's a great area and it had a lot of nice open spots so it's not the same exact spot but it's going to be the same type of forest. So little beech trees as you can see, open spots and echo! And echoes. Very echoey. So, we're gonna cook up some delicious food. Temperatures are a little bit warmer than I'd like for a hot tent, but this has been the warmest winter I've ever camped in, and I can't be too picky or else winter's just gonna be done with. So, we're gonna have temperatures in the teens at night, which will be good, but right now, as you can see, I don't got my jacket on, I'm sweating, and this is a very heavy sled. It's very heavy. I got a new hot tent I'm trying out. Haven't set it up before. It's bigger than last time, so we should have some more space. But anyways, we're gonna keep going. And uh, first nice open spot I find is where we're gonna set up. I want it to be a little bit flat. Like this would almost be a good spot. It's a little bit lumpy. So we'll try to find a nice flatter divot or something, and then we'll set up there. So, you boys wanna keep going? Or you guys wanna just destroy the little beech trees? What are you doing? What are you guys doing? Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, stinkles and stinkles. start <laughs> how strange oh so I'm gonna set down my pack here and uh, rather than just keep trudging around looking for a spot we're gonna set it down and we're gonna pick out a nice spot this is all pretty open you know it's all it's all woods so that's some woods and uh, you know there's woods over there so we just need to, you know, have a good wood spot. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go. I'm gonna hike down over to there. It looks like it goes down a hill, and we're just gonna scour this whole area and pick the most flat spot. So let's get to it. Come on, Mike. Come on, Luke. Let's go. Where I forgot. Who goes in the Yeah, I like the spot where we're about to stand. Nice and open. Good old spot there, but got this huge dead maple, and uh, it'd be fine because it seems pretty solid, but except for down here, you can see it's super punky. Looks like it's rotted through, and that's like super soft wood. So, if a mouse farts, it'll blow this one over. So, not going to be setting up next to that. Okay, this is gonna be our spot. It's uh, you yeah, know, it's pretty, it's open enough for our tent set up. And I like the, I love the pine trees. I came right to the edge of that hill. Um, I love having the dark green background. I'd like to be tucked away in the uh, pine trees. Some, sometimes, pine trees. Sometimes I like being out in the super open. Sometimes I like being tucked in and just feeling like you're in just like a deep wintry forest. I was kind of wanting to go more um, thick in the pines, but you know what? We're gonna take it nice and open because that's a hill down there and uh, I ain't gonna be going up this hill with the sled. <laughs> no, it'll be easy to go down, but coming back up will be a nightmare. So Rue's just gonna munch on a stick there. I'm gonna set down my pack. We do gotta 
big dead tree here, but this thing is solid. Very solid. It ain't going anywhere. No way we're going to cut it down for firewood, though. Nuh-uh. So the first thing we've got to do is take down our stuff, and we've got to flatten out the snow. I was debating if I wanted to dig out to the ground or just flatten it like I did last time, and I decided after shoveling my spot out again, which was a lot of fun because there was even more snow than last time, that I'm just going to pack it down. So this time, uh, last time I set up the hot tent, it was a little uneven, and I, I, I'm uh, contributing that to not packing it down enough with my feet, so I am going to make this a flat, hard surface this time around. So, that's what we're going to do first, boys. I don't know, really step it down. I'm gonna go over it multiple times too. I'm on I'm marching one by one. What are you doing? Hey, I'm just camping. Monty. It's fine. It's fine. Monty is fine. Hey, leave me be. This is for you. This is for you! Why'd you stop? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's calm down. I'm gonna mess up the ground, guys. <laughs> Monty's a fan of stomping down the ground. Ruger's bored by it. He's destroying. Look at that, Ruger. Well, one of many trees that Ruger's probably gonna end up destroying. But you please one, the other gets upset. See, Ruger would be a much bigger fan of snow or shoveling the snow. This is what Ruger likes. Right here. Yeah. This is. That's what he likes. Monty's enjoying this packet down though. I'm enjoying this one better too. I'm gonna spend a good another 15 minutes doing this. I want this ground to be solid. Like an ice. <laughs> Note the day. The one time Ruger's being chill and Monty's being crazy. Since when are you the crazy one, huh? Huh? Look at these good boys. Just chewing sticks all by themselves. Like adult dogs. <laughs> like dog dogs. So I'm just marching with purpose here. I'm stomping. And I haven't really felt much sinking in. I've been doing this for a solid 20 minutes. Just maybe longer, I don't know. It's not a lot of work doing this, so I'm just gonna. Look at Monty. Here, go over here, Monty. Yeah, we've got a nice flat square so far. I spent way more time this time around stomping down the ground, which I think is gonna pay off. You guys shall see, though. Hopefully, this leads to uh, less sinking and warping when I'm walking around inside, but inevitably. Once I take these snowshoes off, I'm still going to probably punch through. I'll just make sure to uh, not walk where I'm going to set up air mattresses. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. But I don't know if I mentioned this, we're spending two nights out here. Ruger, people ever wondered if how he makes me feel when I leave without him? He makes me feel like the most evil person in the world. He just like looks at me with his ears down like, you're leaving again, aren't you? You're not gonna take me, are you? But this time, <laughs> we're not really sinking. This is feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good. Huh? I'll just go for another 45 minutes. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, we're calling it good. About 20, 25 minutes-ish of just 
stomping. So what we need next is to grab the ax and we're gonna need some stakes. We're gonna need two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ground stakes or pegs, maybe this long and like inch to two inches in diameter. Um, and then we're gonna need, we'll, we'll be able to tie off on some of these trees, but uh, if you remember Ruger, he likes to steal tent pegs and sticks. And yeah, you can already tell he's a stick monster. So I'm anticipating he's gonna steal some pegs or something. I'm gonna have to really watch out. So I'm gonna try to do this time, maybe not instead of tying off the trees because he's just gonna ram into the, the, the ropes. I might just use long sticks and put it a foot away from the tent. And then he'll be, he'll be less likely to run into it. But anyways, let's get the ax. Enough chitta chatta. Enough chitta. Chitta chatta. He's got here is a treetop. This has snapped off. So it could still be green. It's, gonna, it's probably going to be solid at least. But this right here, this is what we're looking for. This is like the perfect diameter for some pegs. Okay, that is nice and solid. It looks like it's seasoned, but just barely. So this will be, let's see, it's going to be one, two, three. Let's see how this is. Oh, let's see, that's not very. All right, so this will be three. Leave that root. How many more can we get off of Yeah, we'll use these. There we go. Oh. Okay, bring these back to our spot and make some steaks. Charugs. Oh my god. One. Get back, Rugs, watch out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That, that can be nine ish. <laughs> Ten. Okay, that should be plenty for what we need to do. And then we'll use these big ones. I'll kind of just put the rope around them and then uh, pull them and stick them into the ground. Okay, let's try setting this thing up. We've got the big one this time, the 10 by 10. Last time we were a little cramped. I don't like to be cramped in a tent. I like to have space. So, I'm excited to try this one. This one should be the one that I need. All right, so just like you're supposed to do, Never unwrapped it, never, uh, you know, taken it apart. We're not going to follow the instructions because you never want to follow the instructions. Why would, you, why would you follow the instructions? You just come out here and you figure it out. That's how, that's how you're supposed to do it. Ruger, that's one of my stakes. Hey. This. Ten feet so much smaller than you think it is. All right, fine. You say so. Ten feet. All right. 
Alright, we're gonna just we're gonna start by pegging down the front. Hey! What are you guys doing? You okay? What's wrong? What happened? You okay, Monty? What did he do? What did he do? Did you? Get him! Get him! Get him! You tell him. Hey, no, not those! No! No, no! Alright, so we need a super, super stable peg for the front here. Because this is. This was gonna get a lot of pull. Square is always so much easier to set up than the Pentagon because it's simple. Okay, now we're gonna fold under all these white things and put the Last three pegs in on the sides. Burger, please do me a solid. Don't pull these up. Could you do that for me, bud? Would you be so kind, Rugus? Rugus? Rugus, Tugus, Badugus. I see you. So last time, I uh, I actually, I bought this, I just decided not to use it. And then I used it when I went out hunting with Jake for his little scouting camp. And it's really convenient to just have the perfect size put together pole and a little bottom so it doesn't sink. So we're just gonna unzip this here. Okay, now, I don't know if that's the right height. I guess the only way to really tell is if we start pegging it out and it tightens up. I think when you raise it up too high, it makes it so that you can't, because these are supposed to come out at 90 degree angles like this. That looks pretty good. I think we're just gonna go ahead and try it out. And then we'll raise it if need be. Just gonna adjust this real quick. I want this thing to be set up perfectly this time. I don't want to mess around with loosey goosey tent this time. We want it good. I like to play this game called, um, you know, brand new pair, uh, roll of paracord, cut it up, use some pieces. Bring them home, throw them in a box. Brand new roll of paracord, cut off some pieces, use them, bring them home, throw them in a box. And keep repeating this process until you put them all in a box and then you've got this just rat's nest of three different, four different types of paracord. And it's just the most fun thing to uh... Oh, see? Perfectly untangled. 
That was easy, all you have to do is shake it. We'll start with the, uh, uh, we'll use the orange one first. Put off these two camo and green ones at the side. So first, I'm gonna start by tying on some rope to just the four corners here. Let's see, we'll put a loop about this far out. I'm just gonna tie a loop, just kinda tie it through itself. Just make sure it's big enough to put a stick here. Okay, and then we're just gonna do this on all four corners. Okay, so we're just coming through once, and then we're gonna go over and through, so it almost looks like an overhand, and then we're gonna come like this and go over and through once again, like that. Tighten it up. There you go. And that, I'll stay. And then on the other end, what I'm doing here to put my stakes through, I'm just taking a big old loop. Here, we'll, we'll make it a little bit bigger. And you basically just take, take your string here, pinch it, and then you're gonna go just back through like an overhand knot with both ends. And whoop, we're down here and pull it tight. There we go. And then this, this loop right here, we're just gonna put our stick through it and pull it tight. And it'll be, that's how we're holding the tent up this time. So we're just going to put a rope over our sticks here. Get that to about 90. And then just, let's see, that's, that's 90 right there. Let's see. All right, I think it's gonna, it's gonna need to come up a little bit, the uh, ridge pole. We'll see if Ruger runs into that. Uh, but maybe it'll, it'll tighten up. to come up more. This one needs to this one needs to come out a little bit. So far these are pretty good. I think all we need to do now is just Bring these out. This one's gonna come in a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna come down this time with the rope. I think this one needs to go in. But yeah, we're gonna go straight to the ground. Let's just tie the rest of everything and see how it goes. So we need one, two, three, four. So it'd probably be better if I did all big stakes that are standing up like those ones, but I'm gonna try ground ones for most of them. Except for this uh, one by the door here. We're gonna do this one a big stake. So I probably made this one a little too big. Just pull it tight. Okay, 
still loosey goosey over here. Everything is perfect except for this corner. Urgh. Let's see if we got enough room. That's the main thing. Oh, yeah. We got some serious room in here. Let's see if we can adjust this. Does that help? It's pretty dang roomy in here. I think it's good. Uh, it is a little loose right there, but that's the only spot. The rest of it's got all the, the headroom we need. I don't, I don't really know why it's not. Uh, let's see if I pull this corner out. Maybe, maybe just readjusting this one in general. I gotta zip it back up before I do this. That'll do. All right. Now I'm gonna set up the stove, and then uh, come on, no, hey, please don't, don't be like Rubes. He, he was chewing on my tent peg. Monty, don't do that, please. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go grab a couple of uh, logs like this. Oh no, these guys are gonna rip out my tent pegs. I'm gonna make them come with. Anyways, I'm going to get a couple logs like this just to set the stove on so that when the snow melts, it doesn't go down. And then we're going to set the stove, and then get some firewood, and it's going to start getting dark quick. Stove. Let's open up this thing. I got my stove gloves, but I should bring I should bring these every time I go camping. I just don't. <laughs> because when you're I grabbed this door here a couple times, the handle, bare hands, it gets really hot. Now I'm not gonna use the, uh, I think this is the damper. I'm not gonna use the damper because it doesn't work and I haven't ordered a new one and it works just fine without it. I just have less control and I kind of burn through a little bit more wood, but it's gonna be all right. Facing this corner. I'm not going to use a spark rusher this time because it clogged up. But that's a wrap. We're all set up in here. Hot tent's ready to go. That should be sturdy. Yeah. Oh. So we are all set up. Now we just need firewood. Um, luckily, there's a there's a dead one perfect dead one right there looks like a solid seasoned wood perfect I'm trying to scope out any other ones I can see I mean I got the the chunks off of that tree I can still take my stomach is grumbling we are gonna make some delicious food tonight let's just scope out some more wood we need enough wood we just need to bring it all back here I can process it up in the dark we are running low on time All right, we're gonna save. We're gonna save that easy one for last because it's right there, and I could get that in the dark. Let's go find. We gotta go find a non-easy one, guys. 
got a nice one right here. This is like the perfect size. This is what I need. This one's just going to be able to... Yeah, this one's just... This one's not even... Is it even in the ground? Oh, sorry, Roos. Okay, so... I'm having a little bit of trouble finding them this exact diameter because for this wood burning stove, any bigger diameter than that, and I pretty much can't burn them. Uh, it'll just, it won't work very well. So, this one's perfect. I need probably three more just like it to be safe for tonight. I probably won't need that much wood, and we're probably not gonna have it burning super hot. But, I always like to have more and use less, just in case. So I'm gonna take down a couple more we're going to search for a couple more, and then we'll drag them all back to camp. I always out from the tent, and everything is pretty monstrous. This is the only other one I've found. Everything else, there's lots of dead standing and falling over and whatnot. It's just so big around, and it would just, it'll take a ton of processing, first of all, just to, you know, you got, it's more sawing, then you got to split it. Uh, tonight I'm not looking to do that much, so we'll we'll do we'll look more tomorrow. So I'm gonna take this one and the other one I got. Come down easily, and then we've got that one right near camp. We'll grab, and then we'll lop off of that that dead hanging that we had, and that should be good. So let's take this back to camp, eh, Rooks? Hi, Monty. Hi. Hi, Rouge. You've been, you've been with me the whole time. Hi, Monty. Yeah, see, Monty just likes to chill. Rouge will come help me do the work. This will probably be enough for tonight. I just like to be safe. Is that going to be enough? Huh. I'm gonna go grab some branches off of this. You dokes. So I've got three maples here and uh, some pines, and that should be good for the night. So, also, I got a new saw. I've heard so much about the Silky Big Boy that I just had to get it, and I got a brand new blade on my Ag Agawaya Ag Agawa Canyon Boreal 21. So brand new blades on both, and we're gonna have a battle of the saws tomorrow. Tonight, I'm just gonna use this thing, give it a shot. Ruger is going to uh, cut up all my, or break up all my sticks. So the difference between this saw and that saw is this one cuts only on the pull, not the push. And I had a smaller one I bring canoe camping, and I was just reaming both ways. You snap the tip off, you gotta be careful. far I like it it cuts pretty smooth now hot tenting always means cutting lots of logs lots of wood processing so we have to test out both these saws which one I like better over the next couple days but this one seems to be cutting pretty smooth pretty fast with not a lot of effort so we're gonna stick to this one for tonight. So first off, um, the first thing I'm noticing is um, this, the bandsaw, you kind of, you know, you hold it like this and you go, you push. This one, you have to put your hand like this. And I think it's just cause I'm not used to it, but I don't like, I can already feel my hand like kind of cramping up. When I use this one though, I can go much longer. It just makes my arm more tired. So this seems to cut much faster but that on my hand, I just—I think I just gotta get used to that because I just don't saw a lot of dense wood with those little hand saws.
This is some very solid wood. You know, I've been asked a lot why sometimes I'll cut on the side and why sometimes I'll cut with it standing up. It's always preferable to cut like this as long as you got a solid bottom. See this, it's kind of not too solid, but on top of that, see that there's a check mark here, a natural crack. So I can just like tap my blade right into that. And it, look at that, that didn't even take any effort. And it splits in half. And you know, you can split just fine like this. And then I always have these two, you know, dense pieces here. That's kind of why I like to chop on the side sometimes. But, you know, if you got a nice log where you can stand them up, it's very fun to chop from the top. Let's see if we can, if we can get this to stand up. If you can get it to stand up, then it's fun, you know? You get to chop like that. Whoops. Be careful, rogues. You watch yourself, mister. We're losing daylight now. All right, I'm just gonna continue splitting this up. What I got chopped up here, I'm gonna miss sometimes like that. And then we're gonna get a fire sparked up. Get ourselves building a coal bed. Oh, no, no, don't even, t I wasn't recording the whole time. Oh, blasphemy. Well, the hot tenting has begun. Oh, I'm so disappointed. Oh sure, and then my battery dies immediately. Ruger, you, no, you're not taking that firewood. You leave that. Oh, it's all falling apart. Dude, this, the, I, fired, I started the fire so gracefully, too. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so sad I didn't capture it. Dang it. Oh, we're just going to put this big old roaster in here. If we can fit it. Oh, yeah, we fit it. All right. That doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, so we're going to close that up. Get back to processing some firewood. Let it get warm in here. Okay, so fire's going. It's getting dark now. Um, I'm just going to cut up some firewood and blow up some sleeping pads. And don't worry, you won't miss anything because I am not going to be battling with Monty with the sleeping pad. We're going to just stole another piece of firewood out of the tent. He's going to keep doing that the rest of the trip. But the reason being is because Ruger will pop the sleeping pad. Once, if he sees me attacking and sees it's a game, he likes to destroy toys, and he will destroy the sleeping pad. So I'm gonna uh, use the uh, Boreal 21, try that out for a bit, see if I like that. Monty's got a big old log, but yeah, we're gonna keep processing here until this is all done. The 
this this log's pine, so this is the last one. Just tearing through. I feel like I could push the blade through this. Okay. Whew. That's gonna do it for tonight. I think that should be enough firewood. So now we're just gonna pile this up in the tent, tidy this all around, tidy this all up I mean, and then uh, I'm gonna relax in the tent for the evening. Should, uh, I think that'll be good for tonight. I hope. Okay, before we settle in, and we're all done, we have one final step that everyone is required to do when they are hot tenting. And I've even heard of uh, some people, you know, forgetting this item and going home because of it. And the most important thing to hot tenting is hot tent crocs. It's like Cinderella, slipping on her slippers. Oh, they're so cozy. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's a good boy, Roos. Hey, bud. Here, Monty, come on. Let me get these off for you. Right, lay down. There you go, lay down right there. Oh, look at these good boys. Look at these good boys. Oh, they're just champions this time around. Look at that. We figured some stuff out, didn't we? And uh, so far, this tent is amazing. I love it. I have so much more room. This is the tent I've wanted. Um, I can easily fit. Uh, another person with the two dogs and, and gear. I feel like if you are a person that's on the fence, okay, hold on, Rouge. Let me, Rouge, you're gonna, I know you want the water. Okay, all right, all right, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, there you go, drink as much as you want. Let me sidetrack really quick. Monty never drinks the water I provide. Ruger is the exact opposite. He will drink every bit of water I provide, drink it down till it's gone. Anyways, as I was saying, um, the other hot tent, the nine by nine, uh, is it pentagonal shaped? Go ahead, Rooks, drink that water. Uh, pentagonal shaped, that one was cramped with these two guys. And I think this one's only seven pounds more. And this 10 by 10 square, perfect. And it is toasty in here. I've got the door. We've got a, it's that big at the bottom and it's angled like that um, because Ruger drinks so much water and eats so much snow that if he wants to go to the bathroom, I want to give him the option to be able to just go outside and not have to worry about it. So they, ha they have the freedom to go outside. If they sit outside too long, I'll call them back in. But I think they're gonna wanna stay in here. What do you think, Ruger? You haven't been winter camping in a year. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, he, he wants to play with a stick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's just going to want to play. Ruger has no off switch. <laughs> so that's the thing. All right, so you got water. You guys got water. Um, I've got this turned. I got this cracked as low as it can go. And I'm sitting right next to it. I'm warm. These guys are fine. They've got water. We're good. Let's have a chunk of cheese to celebrate. How about it? Cheese and a beef stick? 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 Beef stick? Okay. Cheese and a beef stick. Agreed. Oh, another thing. You'll notice Ruger destroying little trees and stuff, just chewing them up. I've always asked myself, does he actually eat the trees or does he just chew them up? Turns out, he eats them. 
because he piled, he puked up a pile of sticks. There you go. So yeah, he just chews up those little trees and eats them, and that's probably terrible. So I have to watch him, not let him do that so much. Mmm. -hmm. Mm-hmm. Good boys. Yeah. <laughs> Little, you little critters. All right, we can split one more beef stick. And then we've got to save the rest of them for tomorrow. Okay, you'll know why tomorrow. Mm-hmm, foreshadowing. A little bit more. Okay, there we go. My head's hitting the, it's pushing on the tent a little bit, but that's okay. I'm fully sitting back. This is the, this is the life, huh, guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at you too. So now we're just gonna relax for a bit. I am very hungry, but uh, maybe I should start preparing dinner. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, you guys all want a big feast? We're all gonna have treats tonight? Everybody have treats tonight. So I guess, I, actually, you know what, no. I wanna, I wanna relax for a minute. I just did all that sawing, we got out here, you know, I got up early. So, it's been go, go, go. We're just gonna relax for a little half hour here, okay? But, yeah, we're going to relax for a little bit here, but let's talk about dinner anyways. I just can't help myself. So my biggest uh, winter camping video, the snowstorm one, I did chicken paprikash. And I had a bunch of uh, people from Hungary, Hungarians, uh, be all, be very excited that I was cooking that dish. And I do have uh, Hungarian ancestors. I'm like 25% Hungarian. But anyways, um, I got a few... Uh, recipes from uh, some people that they gave me their versions of chicken paprikash and what what I've been told from uh, a couple of people was that there's no wrong way to cook chicken paprikash there's just many different ways that's how they do it there and uh, so I got a little bit more of an authentic recipe I still love mine and that's the way I've always cooked it and uh, just the way I learned from my dad but I would like to try a different version so we're going to add a few different ingredients and it's um i think his name was peter paul in the comments i'm going to loosely follow the recipe he gave me not too exact and i'm still going to add my little touches you know and just kind of do it my way but just the ingredients you know and just try to follow it more closely to the uh, authentic way so that's what we're going to have tonight is uh some i guess more authentic chicken paprikash more authentic Hungarian chicken paprikash, and it is going to be delicious. Okay, we've got the boys in the tent here, and we've sat around for a good 45 minutes just relaxing, and now it's time to start cooking. Wouldn't you say, boys? So we've got to prepare a few things here, a little more than the regular. Of course, we're going to start with the one, the only, the white onion. Someone asked me, what's my favorite onion? Lots of white onion. We'll save the rest for tomorrow. that to our pot. Might be a little excessive on the white onion, but you know what? Went into woods. 
when in the woods. I used to say when in Rome, but now I'm just gonna when in the woods. When in the woods, you get to do whatever you want. And I want to add it all. Next, of course, garlic. You gotta have it. I put garlic in everything. Some people like a little garlic. Some people don't like garlic at all. I love garlic. Lots of gunion. What'd I just say? Lots of garlic, lots of onion. Gunion. Chop this up coarsely. You know, sometimes you go with three cloves, sometimes four. This is a four times. The rough chop. I've also got a couple pots of snow. One for the boys and one for my noodles. Oh no, precious garlic. Cannot lose. Into the pot it goes. Mm -hmm. This is the new addition. We've got green pepper. Now in his, his recipe he said sweet green pepper. Only sweet peppers I know aren't green. This is, you know, I guess this could be considered a sweet green pepper. But uh, I usually red pepper is a sweet one for me. But nonetheless, I love green pepper. So I will not mind that it's in this. Now I know a lot of people don't like when I chop it this way, but it cuts just fine. So it is what it is. That's gonna sit off to the side until we add it a little bit later. And then there's one final thing, tomato. Now I know my portions, you know, I, I got a lot more green pepper than I do tomato, so I should have grabbed two of these. Well, I didn't, so it is what it is. This is what we got. We got one little Roma tomato, and it's gonna be just fine. Now, have I, I've never added green pepper or tomatoes to my chicken paprikash, so this is new. This is this is part of his recipe, the new thing. He added green peppers and he said sweet green peppers, but green peppers in this. The only other thing I'm really going to pick up from that recipe is that I'm going to use less liquid to make it less soupy. And I'm not going to use anything to thicken it, just kind of let it stew down. And then uh, bone-in chicken. Now, his recipe calls for like chicken liver, chicken breast... Um, some chicken thighs or chicken wings, just all sorts of chicken, just all thrown in there. That's how my dad used to cook it. My grandpa, my grandma, uh, they used to use bone-in chicken and stew it over a long time. I just always used chicken breast because it was cheap and easy. So I'm going to add some butter into here. And we're going to get this cooking. We're going to get our, our, our onions translucent. You always want to cook these down first. So a nice chunk of butter. Get this going. Let's get this going. I am excited. There's so much more room in this tent. It's so great. All right, this is this is melting down. So we're just gonna put this right over here. Get this butter melted first thing. Right now we're just melting water. It's just starting. We're probably gonna need some more wood on this fire here. These guys are just relaxing. Look at them. Just the best boys. I got them closed in here. Um, Monty went out and just laid in the snow. And now he's just laying on a sleeping pad. Yeah. Alright, we need some some wood. So like I said, we're going to cook up these onions till they're translucent. Cook down pretty good. And then we're going to add in some other stuff, some moisture. So like I said, we're, we're going to be following the authentic chicken paprikash recipe. The only things I'm changing is I'm going to add chicken base I love that a little additional chicken flavor probably way too much paprika and then I'm not going to use the authentic nokedly noodles which are 
basically like mini dumplings. Um, I like my white egg noodles, my Amish style white egg noodles. Those are my favorite noodles, so gotta gotta have them. Gotta have them. And then not all the chicken, right, Brooks? Okay. Now, I would normally, at the home, I would use oil, but I always bring out butter out here. I'll try the ghee at some point, but uh, I still just use butter. Let's see what we're doing on the dog water. That's good. I'm cooking up just nasty. Oh yeah, those are cooked down pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do is something I've never tried before with this dish. It's been suggested to roast up the paprika. I've seen this time and time again. So we're gonna try it with just a little bit of paprika. That's like a couple teaspoons. So we'll roast this up for a minute. Ooh, that smell, it's sweet Hungarian paprika. That is my favorite style of paprika. Let's add in some black pepper too. And some salt. Not too much salt. Not too little salt. Just the right amount of salt. I can smell it. Definitely roast it a bit. So we're gonna add in the water now. I don't wanna I don't wanna risk it. So we're gonna keep the water very minimal. Very, very minimal. We're gonna need more than that though. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna add in my chicken base mixed with a little bit of water. For the extra flavor. So now we're gonna get this nice and hot. Ooh, that's gonna be good. I'm gonna add this water into my noodle pot because I forgot to mention that, uh, yeah, I brought him on a sweet potato. And uh, I'm gonna struggle to fit their meal all in this little pot because usually it's just a little Monty dish, but now it's a Monty and Ruger dish, so we're gonna struggle here. We'll just have to add more water as need be, but this, it, it, it's all gonna fit in here. We're gonna turn it into a delicious venison uh, sweet potato slurry. So we're gonna get this on the heat, get this going. We're gonna put this, so when you're cooking on a hot tent stove, or a stove like this, it's always hottest right near the pipe, because this is where it's sucking up the air, and that the flame's gonna be the hottest over here, a little colder near the front. So I'm trying to do a slow simmer on this, so I got this towards the front of the stove, and I want this to boil, so we're gonna have this back here. And that's enough water, so that's just gonna go off to the side for our noodles. You know, I could wait to add these other ingredients, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna add them in now. We're adding in the green pepper. And the tomato, because it's gonna be fine. It's gonna add moisture. It's gonna be delicious. Oh yeah. Ooh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> so now we're just gonna let this cook down for a while. And um, yeah, let this oh, just cook down and we'll, we'll add more moisture if we need it. We'll do a slow simmer for a while. And then we will add the chicken after this is all cooked up because the chicken won't take too long. It'll take like a half hour. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Sir Montes Picantes has antalones in his pantalones. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get a treat. Go ahead, sit down. Come on, come on, get back, get back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be so good. We're gonna let this simmer like this for like a half hour. 
the chicken. Mmm. Oh. Oh. That's got a great flavor already. Oh yeah, this, see this is boiling and this is barely simmering. That's the difference between being in the back of the stove near the pipe. Okay, we're just gonna keep cooking. Oh, like I said, I cracked a beer. Sipping on a beer in the hot tent with the boys here. And you know, life's good. You know, you got this one with the long nose and the little eyes. And this one with the short nose and the big eyes. And you know, he's got he's got unique markings on his face. If you look here, he's got black and white and brown. And then his eyes got black and white and brown and blue. Where did the blue come from? Hmm? And this one, you look at his eyes, it's just black. It's just black. That's all you can see. Every once in a while, on a Tuesday, when the moon is full, you can see the whites of his eyes. Very rare occurrence. I've only seen it like four times. Auntie? Auntie? Monty, what do you need? You need? Oh, I know what you need. I know what you need. Oh, come here. Over here. Over here. Come on. Come on. Over there. Over there. I think I know what you need. You want this. Is this what you wanted? I think this is what he wanted. Hey, you puppy. It's like, no, this is not what I wanted. I'm embarrassed. Why would you do this to me? Please, somebody help me. Is it cool? I'll sit here all day for a bee stick. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, this is that's it for today. That's it for today. We gotta save the rest for tomorrow. Are you ready, Monty? I'm gonna let you down. It smells so good. Oh, I can see how this is gonna taste delicious. Mm -hmm, right about there, you can tell if you look real close, you can just you can just see that mm, it's gonna taste delicious. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, this beautiful pot of deliciousness has been simmering for like 45 minutes from the time we put the onions on here. It is just. Ooh, it looks so good. It smells so good. This tent smells amazing. The dogs are getting antsy because it smells so good in here. They're just, Ruger keeps groaning at me because he knows he's getting something. And Monty, anytime I move, he just sits to attention. So, oh, the flavor is so good. Now, let's add the final parts. What we've got is some chicken drumsticks. We're gonna add just right in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna use a stick to push these down to the bottom. Cover those in that sauce and that goodness. Oh. <laughs> Those are gonna cook up. Now we're gonna cook for at least another half hour. The only reason I'm using a stick is because as many of you know, I don't like chicken. I don't trust raw chicken. Raw chicken grosses me out. So I don't wanna touch my spatula into the raw chicken and push it in. And then, you know, have a chance of, you know, whatever. We'll just wait till the outside's all cooked and then I can stir it again freely because I like, I taste it constantly. I don't wanna have a chance of raw chicken on it. 
All right, let's check out the boys here. All right, the boys. Oof. I'm gonna have to boil it without the lid, but we need to add some venison. We'll see if we can add, I don't know if I can add all this. Let's see how much we can fit in here, boys. Ooh, this is gonna be a pot of deliciousness for the dogs. I think we can get a little more, boys. What do you think? I can't add it all. I dare you. I dare you to add it all. Well, we're definitely not getting it all. Now that I look at the pot. Too much water in there, I'm sorry. So we'll just, uh... You know what? You're just gonna get a little venison for breakfast. No harm, no foul. Well, yeah, let's just put the lid back on there. Let theirs keep cooking. Let's check in a little flip here. Ooh. Oh yeah. Ooh. I'm gonna ever so gently scrape the bottom because we don't want burning. I can't. I can't make it cook any faster. Okay, guy. Okay, there. Okay, there, little guy, big guy. Okay, there. Okay, there. Monty, I need you to lay down. I need you to stop being so aggressive. You're just, you're up here. I need you down here. You're gonna get it. I know you can smell the smells. We eat together, we're a family. You guys, I know you would, after, if, if I fed you your meal now, and you ate it, and then I had to eat without you, I know you guys would feel terribly guilty. Just, you'd feel terrible inside. So, I'm not, I, I know that you'll feel that way, so I'm not gonna have you do that. Like, it just, does that not make sense to you guys? Like, come on. Burger, come here, come here, come over here, over here. This way, oh, oh, no, no, no. oh, 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 Hi, Rooks. Six. Hi. Hi, guy. Were you jealous, Monty? It's like, no. It's like, I don't know if I prefer that. Hi, Rooks. See, Rooks is like a dainty little peanut, and Monty's a potato. He's a dense potato. Rooks are so feathery and light. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, don't give me cut ice. I'm sorry, Rugus. I'm sorry, Rugus, Dugus, but Dugus. You guys are my favorite dogs to cradle. Because you're all my only dogs. Okay, let's take a let's take a little stir here. Oh yeah. That is looking amazing. I probably won't be able to eat this all. But I can never eat all of the food I prepare ever so it'll just be a normal average day out in the woods Ooh. chicken seems to be slowly falling off the bones all right it is time to get our water boiling and the noodles cooking. This is <laughs> this is definitely it's it's definitely more stewy. Um, it just looks so good. <laughs> yep, the chicken is falling off the bones as I stir it. It's just yeah, look at that, look at that drumstick right there. Yeah, it's just falling right off. Okay. So, our water is just taking longer than I want it to take to get ready 
So we're just going to start boiling it. Okay. I mean, it's hot. It's got bubbles. It'll eventually get boiling, but... I think I've cooked cooked noodles in colder water. Let's see how many of these we can fit in here. And like I said, the authentic way, use the nokedly little dumplings. But I like these. It's a personal preference. I love these noodles. I think we, I think we can get them all. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ooh, that water's hot. Ah, it's hot. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know why I keep doing it. We just need them to get soft so I can. Okay, this. I know this chicken is cooked. It's no longer raw or anything. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a taste test here. It's gonna be so good. <laughs> now let's add the goods. I've gotta add it evenly or they will be upset. Oh yeah, all right, we're gonna have a little, uh, little chunks of snow here, just to get it to the right temperature by the time dinner's ready. Okay, let's just taste one. Oh, oh, we need a... Ah, it's hot. Mmm. Okay, they're about done. Just another second. I would say another... We're going to give them 45 seconds. And then we are draining the moisture. And we are combining them with this. And adding the final touches. And it is time to eat. Yes, it is time. Let's add in the noodles. Oh, yeah. We're just gonna add them on top. Oh, just like that. And we're gonna just slightly stir. anything with all this steam oh. oh okay and then there's one final touch to any chicken paprikash you gotta have it you gotta love it little teeny spoonful of sour cream just a little. Oh, it's just. Oh, oh yeah. Mm hmm. Just a tiny little spoonful. Just a little, little bit. Tiny little itsy bitsy portion of sour cream. Oh, yeah. I'm getting so excited. Oh man. Oh, there seems to be a little sour cream in this lid here. Mmm. And that right there is some chicken paprikash. Let us feast. Oh. Hey. Boys, before we start dinner, we need to turn down the heat in here. It's starting to get warm. Real warm. Okay. You have been such good boys. Do you think you deserve a treat? 
You guys ready? Are you ready? Should we start them off like the band conductor? Oh, not the same one, Ruger. No, no, no. Ruger, wait, this one, this one, Ruger, right here. This one's yours. There. <laughs> it worked, but Ruger went for Monty's. They went for the same dish. All right, let's just mix this in here. Oh, I am so excited right now. I'm gonna grab a nice chunk of chicken. I'm just gonna peel it off the bones as I eat it, you know? Mm. I can already tell that this is the best chicken paprikash I've ever made. Mm. You don't like the sounds of slurping. <laughs> this is not a good meal for you to watch me eat. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh man, this fire is way too warm. I need to open up the door here. Oh yeah. That's an oh yeah part. Oh. You know, there's a high probability that I'm probably going to eat all of this. Mm-hmm. 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 <sighs> okay. Um, you don't need to watch any more of this. <laughs> I'm just slurping. It's so good. Um, definitely the best chicken popper cash I've ever made. Um, I like the uh, sturier style. Definitely just makes it a little more creamy. So I'm going to shut off the camera now and uh, mow down on this. Because, yeah, I'm probably not going to stop eating until it's all gone. <laughs> so I'll check back in with you guys when I'm stuffed and uncomfortable. There's just little pieces of chicken and sludge left. What are you doing, Ruse? Oh, I just need to like... Ah. My chair feels like it's screwed in. Ah. A little bit too far for it. Oh, that's better. step on my tummy you're good okay did you have enough rugs did you have a good first night of winter camping for the year we'll see if we can get you out again <sighs> I'm stuffed you know I get the question a lot why does why does Ruger come out winter camping and or why does why does Monty come out winter camping and not Ruger all the time? And uh, 
That's because Ruger stays home with Funk most of the time. Um, if you don't know who Funk is, Funk is Monty and Ruger's mom. And, uh, so, like, I guess if, if to explain it better, you guys could say that this lazy potato here, this stinky, beady-eyed, little, long-nosed, stinky potato is my spirit animal. So, Ruger would be Funk's spirit animal. So you can't take away someone's spirit animal all the time. So, you know, I go out with mine. And, um, he stays home with her. Because she needs her spirit animal. That's just, that's the best way to explain it. As a good boy, yes it is. Yes it is. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy, Rogus. Rogus Togus Butt Badogus. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna chill and then get ready for bed. I don't know if we're gonna move the beds. I think I'm gonna put my bed right here to make it easier for uh, waking up and putting wood in the fire. Cause I don't wanna have to move far to do that. So yeah, I'll probably sleep right here, right in the corner. I don't have anything for you, dude. You got plenty. You're fine. That little tummy of yours. A big tummy. All right, Ruger is just—he's getting aggressive. He's in—he's up in my face. All right, we'll check back in with you guys when I'm ready for bed. I don't think Ruger's moving. Rogus, make do guess. All right, boys, figure out life now. life. You can't lay on me. It's okay, Rooks. Come on. Figure it out. Figure out life. You can do it. <laughs> That's a good boy. <laughs> he wants to lay on me. Oh, Monty, you feel so far away. I'm just gonna lay here with the two stinkers. Got my teeth brushed, everything's cleaned up. I got some snow and some pots off to the side to clean out the dishes. <sighs> that was a good meal. Hands down best chicken proper cash yet. I'm in a little bit of a food coma. So I'm gonna rub Ruger's butt here and Monty's somewhat, and I'm gonna pass out until it's morning. I'm gonna have to probably get up every hour and a half and put wood in there. Maybe less often, who knows, but I wasn't originally gonna sleep with my head towards the wood stove, and I realized how terrible that would be because I'm a kind of a warm sleeper. So, I'm going to put my feet down there. I'm going to toasty feet. I'm going to pass out now. I will catch you guys in the morning. Good night, everybody. Doesn't look right. <laughs> oh man. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, boys. Good morning, buddy. Oh, Rugus. Come here, Rugus McTugus. Come here, Rugus McTugus. Hi, Rugus. Girls. Are you gonna clean his mouth? Oh no! See there it is. He's trying to be the dentist. Oh, I slept so good last night. What you doing, Monty? What you doing, Monty? What you doing? What you doing? You crazy? Rugs, Rugs, you wanna go outside? 
I think he wants to go outside. He might need to go pee or poo. Pee or poo? That's what you're gonna do? Okay. Look how much room is in here. Isn't this crazy? I'm in the corner right now. <laughs> the dog's out. Okay, boys. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, poop. That's a deep hole right there. Oh, it's like, it's, gotta be careful. Oh, no. Oh, man. Right in the center of the tent. Dang it. Okay, be free. It was snowing. Oh, Morden. Oh, yeah, Ruger's got to pee. He's peeing over there. Hey, Rooks. Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh, oh, geez. All right, I'm going to warm up first, boys. Then we'll throw the stick and stuff, okay? we got to watch out now. i got some potholes. Oh. You ever seen somebody in winter snow, long johns, and Crocs? Well, if you haven't, here you go. Oh. Let's open up the vent a little. Let's spoil ourselves. Crack open the vent. Get it get it heated in here. I got the door open for the boys so they can come and go. Don't bring your face, big guy. Hi. Hi. Oh, you're getting crazy. Oh, don't get crazy. Hey. Monty, there's dangerous potholes. Oh. <laughs> I created them, so I'm sorry. Hi, Monty. Hi. Ruger. That's firewood. Rooker, don't do that. Yeah, he chews up and eats the sticks. Monty. Rooker, no! It's not a fetch stick. Okay, he's... I've got these dirty dishes that I need to... Alright, so I'm just going to warm up for a minute. And then we're going to throw the stick for the boys. And then we'll cook some breakfast. Monty. Hi, puppy. Hi. Oh. Hi. Okay. Oh, we're gonna bring it here. Oh, who wants this? Who wants this? Can I get some scent on it? Two little turd nuggets. Bring it here. Now Ruger will fetch. Uh, he will bring it back with vengeance or what's the word I'm looking for? Purpose. He wants to constantly have this stick thrown. So Monty will just chase Ruger. Monty has fun. So fetch will go a little more smoothly with the Rugs here. Monty likes to taunt me. He's, he's sick. Oh, did you get that, Monty? Did Rooks get it? Or did you get it? So I also wanted to say that today is one of our birthdays. Is it Monty's birthday? Is it Ruger's birthday? Or is it my birthday? We'll see. Only time will tell. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep throwing the stick for the boys here, and then uh, let's make some breakfast. Rugus, did you uh, fall into my trap? <laughs> he did. So for breakfast, we're not gonna get too complicated. We're gonna go pretty classic mode. We're having bacon, eggs, hash browns, coffee. Mm 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 mm. Okie dokie. Oof! Dang it! I fell into the trap. <laughs> It'll get you. Off with the cooking. 
Okay, I got all this crap near my feet. Cook some bacon in this pan here. I guess we don't need, let's see these, the boys over here has gotta get hot. Hot, hot, hot. So does this coffee, and so does this pan. One of us birthday boys is gonna get some bacon. Who is it gonna be? Let's see for, for tonight. Oh, I can't hold it in any longer. It's Monty's birthday. <laughs> it's Monty's birthday and he has requested bacon cheeseburger cake for dinner. Or just bacon cheeseburger. He's like, Dad, I just, I don't wanna do the weird cake stuff and no party, no trumpet, just bacon cheeseburger. So I had to oblige. Get him that bacon cheeseburger. Like four. That means I'll cook five pieces right now. I should have pre-cut this bacon before it came out and stuff, but you know what? That's okay. We didn't. You live and you learn. Frozen. Come on, don't tear. Oh no, it's no. It's gonna tear. Dang it. I'm gonna just get rid of some of this grease and we're just gonna cook our hash browns and stuff up in the bacon grease. Hash brown and eggs. But I don't wanna eat too much bacon grease. Alright, this is gonna go in the cold sink. Actually, this little hole right here would be a perfect thing to keep all my meat and everything. Huh. Frozen venison. Going in that water. Ah. Okay. We're cooking. Okay. They got that bacon sizzling. Oh yeah. I got a lot of wood in the stove. It just hasn't got to a crazy flame yet. All right, bacon is sizzling. I'm only I'm gonna cook out a little bit more grease, and then I'm gonna add in the hash browns to cook in. And I'm, I'm just gonna drain a little bit of the grease. I want some of it, but I don't want all that. If I eat all that, yeah, I'll get mud butt. So no, we don't want that. The venison's cooked up, so now I'm gonna add in their eggs. They're getting eggs and venison. I was gonna give them bacon, but then I thought about it. And they're getting bacon cheeseburger later, and they're gonna play an epic game of Find the Treats for Monty's birthday. So we're just gonna give them eggs and uh, poached eggs, poached frozen eggs, as you can see. See how frozen they are? <laughs> they're like frozen little, perfect little eggs. And then uh, venison, yeah, with some pumpkin. That's their breakfast. Today, how to make perfectly poached eggs. Delicious. Just wonderful, delicious, perfectly. They're just boiling. You get the slurry of the raw meat and the egg and you just mangle it. And it, when they're frozen and eventually they comes out perfect. Just wonderful. My uh, bacon's cooked up good enough. So we're going to add way too many hash browns here. Get those cooking. Push that bacon off to the side there. What we're using the bacon grease as the, uh... This, you know, this is going to turn out just like that dull sheep herder's breakfast. <laughs> it's going to end up being the same thing. We're going to add in a little bit of salt. Not too much salt. Not too little salt. Just the right amount of salt. A little on the lower side, actually, because we've already got bacon grease, which is very salty. But black papa, never afraid of that. Monty's, he's hungry, he's standing up with attention. Let's see, are there, is there egg slurry? Oh yeah. Or we just have to be careful and, well, we'll just, we'll just turn it into like this, just egg goo water. Isn't that just look delicious? Just mangled venison egg goo water. I mean, just look at how delightful that looks. I mean, there's a little... Little strands of meat. Oh, look at that. Just that slurry egg, like slime. Mm, mm. Guess what? The dogs are going to love this. This is like 
This is what they live for right here, is this this sort of thing. I'm turning into like this watery egg scramble. Oh yeah. Some powdered pumpkin. There we go. Alright. Now let's just divvy this up for the boys. And they're going to be so happy to eat this. <laughs> it looks so nasty. <laughs> but they're going to love it. Of course the birthday boy needs some. The food should be pretty cold. So it should cool off actually pretty quick. What was I going to say? Monty pretty much refuses to eat now without water in his food. You can just put water, no pumpkin. Just water. He, re he pretty much requires it every meal now. Which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's not like we're spoiling him by putting water in, but like he thinks he's getting spoiled. Let's see here. Still pretty warm. <gasps> That's hot. Yeah, they're hot. Okay. We need to scoop in some more snow. All right, it's good enough. It's steaming, but it's not hot. I just had my finger in there. It's like lukewarm. Go ahead, boys. Go ahead. Go ahead, Monty. Go ahead. Good boys. Now we're just going to keep cooking mine over here. The coffee's ready. Get my grounds. It seems birthday boy would like out of the tent. I must oblige. All right, time to add some eggs. If you look right down there, I put a wonderful addition. There's a big log right here. <laughs> New addition to the tent. All right, we need to add in some butter because this is my hash browns here are getting a little sticky and charred. They're about perfect though, so we're gonna cook our eggs now. So yeah, the. Uh, There's like a crust, the, the warmth of this fire is making it so it's making the ground soft so it doesn't matter that I packed it down because it's so, staying so warm over here. So that's a hair unfortunate. But you know, it's okay. Alright, let's see what happens when I crack these eggs. They're going to probably be partially cooked. Not too bad. Oh, that one's a normal egg. Look at that. Hey. Oh, another normal egg. Wonderful. Okay, let's see if I can flip them. I don't think I'll be able to execute this. Oh yeah, it's kind of stuck to the bottom. We're just gonna go ahead and, there we go. Perfectly, perfectly over easy eggs. Perfectly delicious. <laughs> Perfect. All right, I say she's done. Let's eat some breakfast. This is not for you, Rooks. You, you've get, you, you've gotten plenty. I don't even feel bad. Okay, so breakfast at one, cause it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, breakfast at one. Oh, there's still some uncooked egg yolk. A little bit. I'm just gonna mix this all together. Monty, you coming in? All right, come over here. If you're gonna beg, come, come here, Rooks. Come over here. Come over here. If you guys are gonna beg, come from reasonable angles. Yeah, you can beg there. You gotta sit though. Not you gotta at least sit. Sit. I'm not giving you anything. You already. No. They already feasted. Hmm. <sighs> Oh, 
going on here mmm that's really hot still and this is really hot oh man that was a double whammy that's hot who is on this hot mmm mm-hmm Bacon's not crispy, but it's good. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Very delicious, boys. Mm-hmm. Breakfast is a success. Breakfast at one. So, we've got some stuff we need to do today. We need to play an epic game of Find the Treats for the birthday boy and his brother. So, we're going to do an epic game of FTT. And then we're going to play some Fetch. And we need to get Firewood. Okay, so, according to my firewood pile here, let's see, I say it's like, it's like three dense logs every hour and a half. So, let's see, we've got, we're going to be awake for, let's, let's say, let's say ten more hours we're going to be awake. Right? That sounds about right. Maybe eleven. We'll just say we need wood till tomorrow at noon that'd be easier that's 12 hours or no, that's 24 hours 24 divided by 3 would be 8 so 8 firewood loads 8 times 3 is 24 that's a log per hour I'm a mathematician <laughs> so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we only need about 12 more logs. So I think with that one tree, we'll have plenty. We'll split a bunch up. That one tree right there actually be just fine. Man, I just I just way overthunk to do that math problem. All right, this is cooled down enough. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's still really hot. Just realize my calculations were incorrect. It's two logs per hour because it's three every hour and a half times that by two. That's three logs for six hours. Six logs for three hours. <laughs> yeah, I was I was wrong. I seemed right at the time. So we need about 48 logs to make it till noon tomorrow. So two, four, six. We'll see. We'll take down that one, we'll process it up, and then we shall see. I want to throw the stick for you. Still too close to them eating. It's not safe. All right, let's let's get some firewood and then we'll throw this this stick. I promise. Okay. I hate. I I don't. I'm I'm, I'm just. It's for your own safety. Okay. We're gonna go without snowshoes. Okay, because it's really close to camp. Okay, boys. We're gonna regret it. But we're gonna go without snowshoes. Bigger than I'd like it to be, but. It's right next to camp, so we're just going to have to do a lot of cutting. We'll get to see which saw we like better. Um, that's for sure. At the end of this one, but this will be plenty of firewood for the whole night. Probably more than we... Ruger, stop destroying little trees. Okay, watch out, Rooks.
Okay, you stay back, Krugs. Get back. There it goes. Easy peasy. That is some dense wood. I'm gonna saw this up into multiple sections and then we'll drag it back to camp. I don't know if you've ever sawed up with a handsaw through some insanely, like look at this. I don't know if you can see that. But that, that color, that red, and that, you know, that, that is just solid, solid seasoned wood. So if you've never done it before, it really tires your arm fast. So what I'm gonna do is cut this pine stick right here to get the maximum the maximum length I can have these logs in the stove. So it's gonna be my measuring device. So that way I can measure all my cuts beforehand. And I think if I, if I do it perfectly rather than just guess like I was yesterday, I'll probably save myself at least a cut or two and cutting through this thick, dense stuff, that's gonna matter a lot. So I'm just gonna make a quick cut and make myself a measuring device. Snowmobile is off in the distance you can hear over there. So this is my measuring device. I'm going to make all my pre-cuts and then we're just gonna go to town. begins the really fun part okay so we're gonna start off just cutting this chunk off here there's got to be a snowmobile trail or something over there I hear more snowmobiles okay so now let's test out which blade I like better do I like the boreal 21 or the silky big boy which are both, I'd say, about way the same. Price range is about the same. So we'll see which one I prefer. Um, I kind of am already leaning towards this one because of yesterday. I was cutting and I didn't like this one, how it felt on my hand, but we'll see. We're gonna start with this one, so this will technically be a little bit bigger diameter, but let's just see how long it takes me to cut through this. Whoops, all right, wait, wait, re restart. so fun I can see it now oh my gosh oh man oh one even though it was the worst one that there's just no punkiness to it well we'll just keep plucking away this is gonna end up being more work doing this than it is to uh, go out and find smaller diameter. All right, let's see. My... All right, let's just see how much long this one takes. I don't know what it is. 
I think maybe it's just that I'm not used to it, but I definitely don't like it as much. This makes my arm more tired. <laughs> if I could use two hands, this would probably be great, but I can't, I can't. it'll move the log. I mean, look at this piece of wood here. That, that is about as solid and seasoned and dense as wood can get. I mean, look at that, that's a beautiful, this nice check mark that'll help with splitting. But that is just, hooey. Some good wood right there. So, my conclusion on the Boreal 21 or the big boy, I'm going with the Boreal 21. I heard, so much ranting or raving about this thing, but you know, to be honest, I'm just not a fan. Maybe I'm not using it perfectly correct, but I feel like I can cut through twice as much with this one. The only thing I can't do is logs like bigger than this diameter. Like, look at that, any bigger, and this wouldn't even work because it would just be rubbing this bar. But for me, personal preference, I like the bandsaw much better it just feels it feels better the way I'm holding it and I feel like I can go I can go until it touches here so I know when the end of the blade is and I can use the full length better This scene perfectly describes our three energies when we're winter camping. You got me hard at work, Monty just chilling like a potato, this little peanut being all chewing up sticks and just never stopping. <laughs> oh man. It's so fun. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, stop it.
well, as much fun as I am having sawing through this insanely super thick dense wood, I think I'm going to pump the brakes here for a minute and split some, because I think we should have enough. I've cut off 12 pieces. We needed 48 total to make it from noon to noon if I do six an hour, right? Because six, six times, wait, six, six every two hours. Ah, uh ah, -huh. uh, so it'd be, Twelve times six is more than forty-eight, isn't that? Why is my math so wrong? Okay, we'll we'll cut another couple more and then we'll split. Let me just make sure that what what's going on here. Was it six every three hours? So an hour and a half, three logs. That means three hours, six logs, three hours. Six hours, three. So we do 24 divided by eight. No, wait. Six logs, three hours. We need to do 24 divided by three because it's every three hours. So that means we need eight rounds of logs times two. <laughs> I give up. Why am I even bothering? It's the stupidest, simplest math problem. I'm going nuts, Ruger. I'm going nuts. I am having the wor biggest brain fart of my life right now. Six logs every three hours. That'd be eight rounds of six logs. Six times eight, 48. That was so simple. I was right the whole time. Jeez. Jeez. Okay, I have set up myself a chopping block here. Get my feet all the way. I basically took one log that I didn't cut off all the way and went right to the ground with it through one of my foot holes. So it's sawed right to the ground. But uh, some of these are cut at an angle. So it might, oh man, why? <laughs> no. All right, well, we'll give that a shot. We need our full sweet R Ruger. Get back, back up, back up. Ooh, I almost missed. That's why this is like that. All right, let's try the check mark on this one. This is not going as well as I planned. All right, we're, we're switching spots back. We almost got this one too. Let's see if I can just get it on the check mark, make it easy. Ooh, I did.
we go. Easy peasy. Guaranteed no hiccups. Well, maybe a few. That's what happens when you uh, don't have a leather guard on your axe. Oh, that's the first time I've done one that major. I've done little ones before, but I've never whacked it that hard and whiffed, so uh, my bad. I've had other people do it before me, but now I don't get to complain at anybody. I took a nice old chunk out of that axe. Dingus. Already, just do it. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> There's a huge rip right there. Hilly <laughs> lee. You think this is a game log? You think this is a game? Well, uh, that's pretty much all the hard work for the trip. As long as this fits in the stove. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Oh man, that'd be super fun. I'd be so happy. You know, I better double check that real quick. Either way, if those do fit, that's all the work for the trip. So, what did we learn? I learned that if you want to work hard, you could have some beautiful, perfectly seasoned, just better than money can buy firewood over here. Like this is, this is as good as it gets right here. This is tip top primo, hardwood, dense, not punky rotten. Listen to that sound. Sorry. Anyways, like I said, that, that right there is the, the primo, primo firewood dance song. <laughs> Would have probably done a lot less work uh, going out yesterday and going far and searching and dragging back trees. But that's okay. We learned. And uh, we got some beautiful firewood. Let's get it in the tent here. And then the boys, we got to set up something for them. Just, this one looks pretty long. Let's just hope it fits. It fits. <laughs> By that much, like I had to wedge in there. I'm looking at this this is way 
way too much firewood. <laughs> this is way too much. There's no way I'm gonna burn all this. That's insane. <laughs> oh. So now what we've got to do is have some fun for the boys. Fun for the boys. We are going to set up an epic game of outdoor find the treats. What do you think about that, Monty? Find the treats? You guys want to find the treats? Yeah, you want to find the treats out here? Okay. Okay. Let's just... Uh, hey, move this out of the way. I need to make... I'm going to make them follow me and I'm going to make a packed trail to every place I'm going to kind of hide treats nearby. I'm going to go through here, back here. We'll do some up here. We'll keep it from here, this big, huge maple to those pine trees so we can capture it all on camera. We'll keep it within this area, but I want them to follow me so that they know like, okay, it's over here. So that's what we're gonna do first, boys. We're gonna put on the snowshoes, pack you down a trail so that when you guys are ready to go, there will be no, no uh, holding you back. Now Ruger lately has been kind of smoking Monty in the find the treats game, so hopefully we give Monty some advantage with this, you know, path and this way. Come on, we're gonna go find the treats. We're gonna go find the treats. There's definitely gonna be a treat right here, okay? Well, I think we'll put one here. All right. The boys are in the tent and I've got the treats. Uh, put one right there. I'm gonna move this. Looks like I'm sniffing that. So now I'm just gonna set them up all over the place, and then they are gonna know exactly what to do. Hey Ruger, don't my little blooties look like boxing gloves? Get back over here, fight like a man. Okay, now it is time. I'm gonna take these off. Okay, it is now time to unleash the beasts. Go, 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 find the treats. Getting whooped. Go. We're getting ten. All right, he found one, Ruth. All right, go. Now you can go back. Go this way, Monty. Go get him. Go get him, Monty. Go over there. Monty, those are sticks. Monty, no, no, those, are, those, that's not it. Come on, Monty. Go, 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 go. That way. Go find the treats. 
There you go. Guys. Bungie, over here. Bungie, get over here, Bungie. Come on. Get over there. Go ahead. Monty, listen to your dad. Monty, I'm trying to help you. Good boy. There you go. Good boy. Bunch of here. Bunch of get over here. Oh, you found one. Good job, Bunchy. I'm sorry I got it. My burger come here. No. <laughs> I was trying to save that one for Monty. Poor guy. It's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to give Monty a little bit more of the bacon cheeseburger later. That's what we're gonna do to even things out. Cause I'm gonna admit it right now. Ruger has destroyed Monty at Find the Treats, the outdoor version. Just, he's left them in the dust. Oh, we're gonna go check all the spots. It's, you found them all boys, you found them. Good job, good job. Good job, Monty. Good job, Monty, you did, you, good job, Ruger. Boys, good job all around. Everybody's a good boy. Everybody found the treats. We found them. We found them. Now we can throw the stick. Yeah. Yeah, good job. So, the results are in. Ruger won. Monty got a little sidetracked. He went a little far. Ruger, like, snapped to it right where we walked from the path. Okay. So we've got two hours of light left. I got all the firewood I need. Um, we did our epic game of find the treats. We've thrown the stick for the boys. So we're gonna just make up some food later and relax. So we're gonna, we're, we need to kill some time here. What do you guys say we go to a dog park walk? Gonna go for a walk at the dog park? Dog park walk? All right, we're gonna suit up. We're gonna go for a walk. I wanna go down into this thick stuff. If it's down this hill, see what's down here. Might be a little swampy. But we're gonna go just explore a little bit. Why not? Why the heck not? Huh? At least for an hour. We got a little bunny tracks, Rooks. What do you think about that, Monty? They go all over. Over there. You guys hear that plane? A little bunny tracks everywhere. Poor Monty got stuck. Oh my god. Hold on. What'd you do without me? Right. Come on. Up, up, up. Oh, oh, oh. come here. Oh. oh, you got a little wet. Oh no. Oh, it's you broke through. Oh no, you poor guy. Okay. We're gonna go back to camp. <laughs> poor Monty, are you okay, Monty? He he didn't, he didn't want to follow me. He came down through there and then just, yeah, he wasn't getting out. That was a Monty trap. This is blowing my mind right now. Look at these booties. You saw him, he was in some slush mud water. Oh, 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 oh. Yet, he's got no mud on him and his booties, they're not soaked. Look at that. That's just frosty. And there's no mud on Monty's there's a little bit, but it, all his paws are clean. It's like a, it's like a miracle. What the heck, Monty? A birthday miracle, that's what it is. Hey guys, it's still here. It's still there. Come on, let's take a little relax. Come here, Roos, come here. Let me get these booties off, okay? Oh. Ah. Hold on, let me 
I get you. Oh, don't lick my hands. Sorry, sorry. Oh, stop it. Get us something a little more comfy. Yeah, get them cracks. I'm rocking the cracks and waterproof socks. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. River, you feel free. If you want to go back out there, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, we did uh hour 40 minutes walking. Can you even see me? I don't know. Who cares? So we have, let's see, half hour of light left. Half hour? Yeah. So what we're going to do now is just relax. Relax till it's dark. And we're going to get to cooking. So we're just going to do some chilling for now. Anyways, yeah, we're going to cool down. And then when I get chilly, we'll close the door and we'll put some more wood in. And then, uh, yeah. That's that. So I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit here. We're just doing some relaxation time. Are you refreshed now? Are you refreshed? I think Ruger's refreshed. Yeah, aren't ya? You little whippersnapper, Monty's not. Monty's done for the day. Ruger's been sleeping hard now for... over an hour. Over an hour, we've been chilling here for a good Hour 45-ish? I've just been chilling. Should have brought a book. But I've just been kind of just relaxing. Kind of dozing off almost. So I didn't I didn't really nap. I just kind of... We've got a light snow going on. But just kind of, you know, thinking. I should have brought a book, like I said. I didn't bring one. Planes everywhere. Planes and snowmobiles. Can't escape those. We can't escape those. It's okay. But yeah, as you'll see, Rugs when he sleeps, he twitches. He does little twitches. And unfortunately, we believe that that is a... Uh, that happened from his blasto. He didn't twitch when he slept until he started taking that medicine. And for those of you that don't know, if you're new to the channel, Ruger had blastomycosis. So for a year, pretty much, he couldn't do much because he had no vaccines and he had a weak immune system, couldn't prevent from limes or anything or his orals for heart disease and all that stuff. Um, so he had to take a pill once a day, a $7 pill once a day for a year. It wasn't cheap, it wasn't fun, 
He was a little bubble boy, but anyways, that medicine gave him this permanent twitch when he sleeps now. Okay, Rooks, come over here. No eating the sticks. Come on. You want to come up in my lap? Come on. Up, up. Up, up. Let's... Come on. Oh, just spill the water. Oh. Anyways, yeah. He's got a permanent twitch now when he sleeps, and you can notice it in that clip. <laughs> Monty's had a long day. All right, Rooks. Oh, you sipping the water double time. Yeah, he's recharged. He's refreshed. Monty is just... He's done, son. And you know, as far as recording goes, when he fell in that little hole and uh, he needed help, it's you You always got to turn the camera on first before helping, as long as it's not life-threatening. Always turn the camera on, you know? Especially when your friends, like, you know, Jake Ski Guy, for example, you know, he falls... And he's stuck in the snow. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna miss that gold and help him out without recording it. You serious? What are friends for? I'll help, but I'm gonna like record myself doing it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had a rough day. Yeah, you had a big birthday. Big good birthday day. What? uh... What you guys doing, <laughs> Ruger? <laughs> your uh, your butts in the camera. <laughs> I think these guys want to go outside. What you guys want to go outside and go potty and stuff before dinner? All right, we're gonna let them get it out of their system. Go outside, play around for a minute. I'm just gonna chill in here. I'm just gonna let them go out there and do nothing conspicuous in here, and then uh. Yeah, we'll start cooking dinner. Hey guys, I'd just like to take a minute to thank my dad for finally once in my life providing me a normal birthday with just my best friend Rooks. He's just gonna make me a delicious bacon cheeseburger and no shenanigans. So yeah, I just, I, I appreciate that. Just wanna let you guys know. Monty Ruger, come here. Surprise! Why? Why have you done this? Okay, boys, it's party time. Birthday party time. <laughs> it's a surprise party, Monty. Yeah. Yeah. You thought I would forget? I wish you would have. <laughs> oh, never, Monty. It just... <sighs> okay, boys. It's a birthday party. Oh, Monty. We've got a birthday party. It's a birthday celebration. Monty. Good boy. How old are you turning today, Monty? Monty is turning four. What a good boy. Four years he's had to deal with it. Well, only three, actually. What did we do for your first birthday? Oh, we did something. We did something. Maybe it wasn't a video about it, but there was something going on. Okay. So anyways, it's time to make the cake now. Right, boys? You guys hungry for a treat? You want a treat? All right. So I guess let's prepare some dinner. We have got, we're going to have bacon cheeseburgers, and I'm going to have potatoes and onions and garlic, my little classic trio there. So I'm gonna start that first, and then we'll start making the boys, or we'll start making the bacon, put the bacon up to the side, and then we'll make the their burger first, and then I'll make mine at the end. And they'll just more than likely beg for mine, but that's okay. Okay, let's get prepared. We got a few things to prepare. Okay. First thing is first, we've got to prepare a couple of things. 
All right, garlic first. Gotta love it, gotta have it. Leave it very roughly chopped this time. Cause I want a nice bite of garlic when I'm eating my potatoes and stuff. Then of course we've gotta have potatoes. I've got five red skin potatoes. Ooh, big pieces here and then of course of course my other favorite a white onion yep that's the onion Now we're just gonna add a chunk of butter. Healthy little core stick of butter there. And some salt. Ooh, not too much salt. Not too little salt. Just the right amount of salt. Put that back in. And then black pepper. All right, now we're just gonna cook this for a while and we're gonna get the bacon going. Get on there. Get the potatoes and onions going. Okay. We're cooking now. Uh oh. Whoops. Should melt that butter a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful bacon. Mm -hmm. This is cooking up nicely. Lots of onions and potatoes. It'll cook down. We're going to add just a touch. Just a smidge, this bacon grease, just a, there we go, that's good enough. There we go, that'll, that'll add to the flavor and that'll keep it from burning. Ooh, we're almost done on the bacon. Oh yeah, that bacon grease helped a lot. Keeping it from sticking so bad and burning. It's cooking nicely. Oh yeah, it's gonna be good. All right, that bacon is done. We are going to set it on this beautiful piece of wood here to soak in the grease and then we'll burn it later and clean up everything. It'll, it might get cooled down a little bit, but that's okay. Okay, now we're just gonna carefully set this out of the reach of the dogs. Very important, that part. All right, now I'm gonna clear this out and we're gonna get the burger going. All right, there's what's going in first. I pre-formed the patties. I did not buy pre-formed patties. I pre-formed the patties because I've had troubles with the fat in the past. So, theirs is going in first and they're gonna cook theirs up first because theirs is unseasoned. So we're gonna cook theirs to a rare state and then we are going to serve it to him as soon as it's ready. Oh yeah, this ain't no uh, small burger either. This is a half pounder.
Oh yeah. You have no idea how hard it is for me to not reach over and eat that bacon. I want to just munch on it so bad. It's so crispy looking and delicious. Be strong, Matthew. Be strong. Oh yeah. It's got a nice, just like, soft feel to it. It's not getting, I prefer when it's like this over getting like charred and crunchy when I'm out here. Okay, the boys can eat raw beef, so we're gonna call that good for them. What we're gonna do now, I'm not giving them too much bacon, but they're gonna get some bacon. We'll do one side, gets that much. The other side gets that much. Remember, we're making Monty's a little bit bigger because he's the birthday boy and Ruger completely destroyed him at Find the Treats. Just keep that in mind. They're going to get a few chunks of cheese on here. Cut off the block. And we'll just let it melt for just a second. We're not going to let theirs get... Theirs isn't going to get insanely melty. Because they're not going to care. They just want that bacon. I don't want to give him too much cheese. I feel Ruger's got more cheese on his side. Okay. There we go. Alright, hold on, boys. Alright, now let's bun theirs up. And serve it to the boys. Bring him the cake. Okay. Stay there. <laughs> there we go. That's what I was looking for. Wait, 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 don't burn your nose. Are you going to make a wish, Monty? Make a wish. I wish you would never do this again. <laughs> Just kidding. You're going to make a wish, Monty? <gasps> okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. We got to cut the cake. We got to cut the cake. Drugger's bowl. Monty's bowl. Oh, it's nice and pink in the middle. Okay, boys, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Good boys, you've earned it. Good boys. That's a good bacon cheeseburger for good boys. Here, I'll be out, Rooks. <laughs> you ever see dogs wearing birthday party hats eating bacon cheeseburgers while winter camping before? Oh, you scarfed it. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, Monty. Rouge, you scarfed that down. Okay, all right. The cake's been eaten. I guess we can take the hats off now. All right. Okay, everybody, everybody calm down. All right. Now, me, I like a little seasoning. Just a little bit of Montreal. Just, just a smidge. Oh, yeah. A little bit. 
on that that side and then a little bit on this side yeah just for some little little flavoring all right Ooh. Ooh, this is getting close. Yeah, these are definitely very close. This is going to be perfectly timed with my burger. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're having a bacon cheeseburger today. Oh, we're going to have some begging puppies, but I am not going to give in to them whatsoever. No way. Just sipping on a beer. Mm-hmm. Ooh, almost spilled it. I'm letting the boys go in and out. Oh, my party hat. I'm still partying. Okay, even if you guys are not, okay? Yeah. So yeah, I'm letting the dogs out because uh, <laughs> it's so hot in here. <laughs> this, um, so I guess another little update with this firewood. I needed not even half of that firewood that I got because um, when I can get a fit, I, basically back here, this the little back, the wood doesn't burn as crazy in this corner. So I have to just basically, I have a piece that I'm just wedging it over. But when I get one of these big, thick, dense, long pieces in there, one of those pieces is like three of the other logs from before. Just one of them. So I basically needed a third because I can I fit one of those in there and sometimes I can get two and it's burning super hot and it's lasting at least two hours for a couple of pieces um, and it's just hotter the whole time and then the coals are just super hot so now now that we're gonna revisit the whole thought process of that was too much wood blah 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 if you just do a few big dense pieces like that that are very perfectly seasoned it's actually less work so it's better is what I'm saying I think now I'm gonna be able to sleep hotter and wake up less to keep the fire going so basically what I did is just too much wood we're on the right track though we want the big dense pieces should have went an inch shorter to fit more and make it better but this is definitely all around better than my little logs I guess I can give you my hot tent, my hot tips, hot tips, you know, Crocs, Crocs and socks, waterproof socks. Here's my hot tips for hot tenting. Pack down your area for hot tenting if in the snow very well and spend at least 20 minutes doing it over and over, over and over. And then make sure you have more than enough firewood, more than enough. And if you're going to go for the best firewood, get big dense pieces that you can quarter up and make them a little bit less, like two inches less than the length of your stove. Another hot tip is don't randomly step with force throughout your tent because I've got two super deep holes that go right down to the ground. It's at least two feet now, two feet down, just huge holes. The dogs have walked in them a couple times. So there's that. Guess that's hot tip number three. Oh, the logs. Let's just take a peek at these. So when I started, those were barely out of the snow. I packed them right in. And now it's like, see how the snow is all melted underneath? And it's just like, they're on like a little ridge. If I would not have put these logs down before putting on the snow, it would have melted and shifted a bunch and the stove would have kept falling down throughout the night. Ruger, get out of there. Stop it. You had a bacon cheeseburger. Get out. Anyways, yeah. So, this is important. Put down some logs, smash them down as much as you can. I did, this morning, smash them down again because they were just on like little peaks of snow. So that's a, another little hot tip. All right, I'm gonna flip my burger again. Ooh, it's looking good. It's looking good. Gloves. Leather gloves. Got these from my parents. Didn't know what I was going to use them for. But they make the perfect little, you know, 
Mr. Jake Ski Guy had had something, you know. He was right about the leather gloves. You know, my parents got them, and this is what I use them for. I should probably bring them every time I go camping, but you really need them for a hot tent because that front handle, I burned my fingers the first time that I learned. All right, I think my burger's about ready. It is time to finalize my burger. Let's add our bacon, which is a little bit chilled, but you know what? It's not gonna matter because it's gonna heat up and we're gonna go heavy on the bacon for this one because I'm only having one, one cheeseburger, one bacon cheeseburger. Yep, that's right, that, that amount of bacon. It's going to go on this bacon cheeseburger. Just a little bit of cheddar. Just a little bit. Alright, that's enough cheddar. And then I've got some pre-sliced pepper jack. Just because I wanted it to be extra melty. Now, if this wasn't stacked so high, alright, we're putting this chunk of cheese on top. I would uh, put a lid on it, but we're just going to go for gold like this. But the trick is, a little bit of water will create some steam. There we go. We'll try to lid it. on that heat more all right we're gonna see if that does the trick all right let's see if it worked okay oh yeah <laughs> Ooh, that worked enough it's cheesy enough okay let's plate up our burger okay oh yeah big old scoop of mayo on the bun oh yeah we're not going any veggies. We're going meat and potatoes and cheese. And then on top of that, I was recently sent some Coleman's English mustard, which I like. It's got a nice kick to it. So we are gonna try that here as well, because I love mustard. Okay. <laughs> mm. Ooh, I should not have put that in my mouth, that mustard and mayo. Mm. Ooh, I wanted to clean up my spoon. <laughs> okay, let's eat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's eat. Oh, my cheeseburger. Gotta be careful. All right, boys, go ahead. Go ahead, eat yours, yeah. You're good. You don't have to wait for me. Ooh. Oh, the camera is so far off from being reasonable. Okay, here we go. Hmm. Hmm. Here you go, Mitch. Back up. Here you go, we're over here. Over here. Hmm. Hmm. There's so much bacon on that. It's so good. Mm-hmm.
Mm. Now these are delicious. These are a wonderful side. But they're way outshined by the main course here. I'm gonna show off this camera and the light and just use this crappy little light and devour the rest of this. So I'll check back in with you guys when I'm done feasting. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I guess you can check out your surroundings. Oh, everybody lay down. Yeah, just, just, it's bedtime. It's not food search time. You little monsters. Rugus likes to lay on me for bedtime. Monty is going to do his own thing. Yes, we had an owls going off. I've heard them a few times tonight. That was the loudest they were, though. Was that last little clip? I think I got a clip of it. Just barely. I heard them, and I was in the tent messing around. But yeah, we we ate up dinner. I I ate all my potatoes. I took my time. It's late. I uh drank my two bears. I uh. Got all prepared for bed and uh, yeah, relaxing evening, nice day, good day with the boys here. Monty's four now. He's four. He's a dog. He's like officially a dog, 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 dog. I mean, three's pretty good too. Ruger's almost there. He's still two, but Monty's four. Anyways, we're gonna pass out. I'm gonna sleep like a baby, so I'll catch you guys in the morning. Good day, everybody. Good morning. Hey, 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 hey. Ruger. Oh, 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 jeez. for nose pop sleeping pads 2020 what happened <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> did you bite the sleeping pad I think it happened when Ruger jumped on me It's okay, Roots. It's okay. It's okay. <gasps> Dang it! Oh my gosh. How did that happen? Oh man. A big ol' split. How did that happen?
maybe something sharp? Well, this is what I get. This is this is the cost of my shenanigans. <laughs> Dang it! It's 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 Dad's fault. It has nothing to do with you, Rooks. I don't even know. It was probably you jumping, but I deserved it. I deserved every. Dang it! Just dang it! I'm s dang it! Come here, Monty. Come here, Rugus. Both good boys. You're such good boys. I'm sorry for scaring you. Trust me. I regret it. I immediately regret it. I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. I regret it. Let's just be. Let's just do some pets and stuff. Rugus. Dang it! My bad. <laughs> um, I slept great, but I'm gonna pack away everything in the tent here. And then, uh, we're gonna pack up and get ready to head home, so... Yeah, I'm gonna let these guys out of the tent, and I'm gonna tidy up in here and get things packed away, and regret that I jump-scared Monty and Ruger this morning when I woke him up a lot. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get the rest of the tent back up and get moving. So let's do it. Well, we definitely had a ripping hot fire all night. And like I said, <laughs> I only needed a third of that wood. We were much hotter last night than the first night. I think it was colder and uh, it lasted longer. So let it be a lesson to you. It's so nice. I just want to take it home with me. It's just so much, it's so much weight. Otherwise I would. Dang it. Well, you know, we'll have to look to the footage and see what happened there with that sleeping pad. But that was the end of No Pop Sleeping Pads 2020. If I had to put my best educated guess, I think the force of when Ruger initially bounced on me, maybe it was too much weight and it just split it at the seam. Or maybe one of my zippers from my sleeping bag was underneath and when he jumped and I like squirmed around it like sliced it. Ruger, you want some stick? Stick throwing? Where am I to get? Well we'll find out. We will find out. Hopefully I caught something on camera that I can see. Watch out, Rooks. Get back. Oh, Ooh, this one's hot. Hear that moose? Mm. 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 By moose, I mean snowmobiles. Just gotta break these long ones loose and undo the loops. I didn't really tie, oop. The knots are just tied to loops, so that's all that's holding it up. So I think as far as what was making it loosey-goosey, I think what needed to happen is um, 
I need it to not stake out the corner so tight so that I can raise the center pole up higher. Because I was looking and it looked like there was just a little sagging. The walls weren't going up super tight. So what happens when I pull out the corners as tight as they could go, I can only put the center pole up so high. So if I would have let those be a little bit more loose, I could have got the pole up higher and then that would have made it so that the sides could have gone up more. And I think that's what it was. So, with this firewood, I am going to pile it, there's a big overhang, and there's not much snow underneath this pine tree, just in case I either come camp in this area or someone else does, it'll, it'll at least be some firewood that's sitting here. It's just too beautiful of firewood to just like it covered in snow and turn to rot. The outdoorsman in me is hurting because of this firewood. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll come back to it. Specifically because of this firewood, we'll come back. I've decided I'll put the rest of it over there once I uh, put my snowshoes on. <laughs> oh yeah fits right in. I wasn't worried for a second. So, Bruce, watch yourself there, mister. Okie dokes, folks. That's, uh, everything's packed away. We're ready to go. Uh, that was a wonderful two nights. Had lots of fun with the boys here. You know, we had some shenanigans. We had some delicious food. And we got to add another, uh, pop sleeping bag to the record books to reflect on because you know there's the one time that I got it a little too warm and he's oh no and then there's the one time I got it uh, uh, too riled up with Monty Monty's sleeping pad is not holding air it uh, it's got a hole in it somewhere what could have caused a hole. Yeah, I don't know. And then the one time I got riled up with too much with Rooks. <laughs> so hey, there we go. Maybe I could enter myself in the World Book of Guinness Records or World Guinness Book or whatever records for the most on YouTube camera pop sleeping bags. Maybe we're onto something there. So anyways, we're gonna get headed back to the car. I've gotta drive home, clean all this stuff up. I've got to start editing my footage immediately and then continuing to edit all day tomorrow so that I can get it to you guys on Sunday. So this is gonna be a two day because there's a lot of stuff to go through here. So I gotta get to it. So anyways, that's it. So as always guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit the subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Come on boys, let's go.